today is Kathy Kerouac, a retired school teacher and holiday expert. I can tell you that I love being at Kathy's house around Halloween. Kathy, how are you today? I'm just great, thank you. You're welcome, thank you. Um, can you tell us a little about the history of Halloween? I sure can. It begins with the ancient Celtic people who lived in the United Kingdom, Ireland, and parts of Northern Europe. They would celebrate the end of their harvest on October 31st through November 1st, and it signified the end of the harvest and the beginning of the dark days of winter. And thus they would light bonfires to keep to remind them of the warmth of the sun and the days. And then, of course, and then of course you had at night when the winter was going to come, the darkness of the winter. So with that, they had a time when this was when the the veil between the earthly and the spirit world was at its thinnest and that the departed souls could come to visit. So everyone would then don a costume to to disguise themselves so that the spirits wouldn't recognize them and thus you had the the idea of wearing costumes at Halloween. Yes. Uh, there's also the medieval practice of souling, and that's when the poor people would go to the homes and the rich people would make them cakes. These were cakes that had currants or raisins on the top of them, and they would ask these poor people to please, pre, please pray for their departed souls and that no harm would come to them in their homes. And thus you have the spirit of trick-or-treating. I give you a treat if you don't trick me and let those spirits come near me. So that's where that came from. Yes, of course. Mm -hmm. Then, of course, as the times went by, the Romans who settled in and acquired and assimilated the cultures of these lands, they had their two festivities. And those were one of Feralia, and that was to, to signify the departing of their beloved people that had died. And then also uh, the Roman goddess Pomona. And to represent Pomona, they would show an apple. And so therefore they think that this is where we got the idea of bobbing for apples. Yes. Yeah. Things that you take for granted, but <laughs> you never knew why. But of course, the biggest thing came about with, was when Christianity came into play. And that happened around the 8th century with Pope Gregory. And he finally decided that November 1st would be called uh, All Saints Day. And he said that then because of the, the, the festival that the Celts had, which is called Samhain on October 31st, that that would be called All Hallows Eve, Hallow meaning holy, and therefore, All Hallows' Eve morphed into All Halloween. So October 31st is the evening before All Saints' Day. Cool. All right. Wow. I didn't so, know that either. Mm -hmm. And then the idea of black and orange as being the colors for Halloween. Orange, obviously, was because of the orange leaves and the reds that would come about as autumn approached. But then the black signified the dark days of winter that were coming, but also of devils. Right. And then, of course, you had the witches in the Celtic people were known as just wise women. They were the ones that dispensed the medicines and potions to the people. And, of course, they felt that these wise women could turn bad people into cats. And then, hence, you had the black cat was, of course, really de uh, demonized and made the bad guys, so along came everybody killing all black cats, and therefore then you had the bubonic plague setting in because there were so many rodents now running around Europe, and that's how you got a bubonic plague. I have no many. idea about that either. Right. It's very interesting. And then of course you have Stingy Jack, and the, the tradition of having a jack-o'-lantern. Right. Stingy Jack was a bad man from Ireland, and all he did was drink, and he made a deal with the devil that he could possibly, oh, just one more drink. And of course, the devil said, okay, well, Stingy Jack tripped him twice, and twice was too many. And so Stingy Jack then had to roam the earth because he wasn't allowed into heaven when he died, and he wasn't, the devil wasn't going to let him come into hell for what he did to him. So he roamed the earth with an ember in a carved out gourd, and that's where you get a jack of the lantern became Jack of the Lantern. 
Oh, wow. Amen. Wow, thank you for all that history, Patty. Yeah. Well, I didn't know a lot of that. That's, that's amazing. <laughs> well, why do you like Halloween? Why do you love Halloween so much? Oh, because it just brings such joy to the children that come by to trick-or-treat and the parents that are with them. They oftentimes fill my yard. And, you know, I've had one time when a parent came into the house and wanted to see all the decoration. So it's just a fun time for everybody. That's all. Well, Kathy, I love what you do. It's obvious that you love the kids, you love the grown-ups. It's no wonder you were Teacher of the Year so many years. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much for being here. It's a pleasure. Well, now I have to start thinking about my next podcast. So let me look at this crystal ball. <laughs>